it's been five long years since the Braves have come to St. Louis and won a series against the Cardinals here at Bush Stadium. But after the first two games, it's safe to say the Bravos have kicked the tail feathers out of the Redbirds. Hopefully they can complete a sweep here on a hot, sweltering Sunday afternoon for Big League Ball. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome back to St. Louis. We missed the game last night, but everybody really enjoyed the pitching of Max Fried and a breakout offensive performance as the Braves romped to an 11-4 win. Way up and down the lineup, everybody was having some fun, some fun last night at the expense of the Cardinals starter Luke Weaver and it started pretty early. Max Freed did his job. He was outstanding. His best start as a major league pitcher struck out 11. He walked three and he had some kind of good curveball working yesterday to stymie the Cardinal hitters and that gave the offense a chance to go to work. Ronald Acuna Jr. put the team on the board first with his home run. Ozzie Albies extended his hitting streak to 10 games. And Nick Marquez has hit a grand slam home run for the first time in over a thousand games in his career. Pretty amazing. When you look across the board here at these guys and what kind of day they had, there are some other guys that had good days too. They just couldn't fit on the board. So <laughs> I, what I especially liked though, Chip, was Max Fried and what a great effort he had. Yeah, it's tough to lose with 11 runs. Max Fried did a great job picking up his first victory. Now the challenge for Mike fulton -Evich. Take care of the Cardinals, get the sweep, and I would think on a hot day, do it economically. Oh, that is so important today. He's going to have to really conserve some energy if he can fewest pitches he can muster per inning will help him go a little deeper into the ball game. Nobody expects him to go nine today. You're seeing some work against Cincinnati. He was excellent again, five and a third. He didn't give up much. He did walk a few guys in that outing, but today he can't afford to do that. He's got to throw strikes. You see the, see the good work over his last eight. And a familiar face is pitching for the Cardinals. It's John Gant, the man with the Vulcan changeup. Vulcan changeup. <laughs> Beware. He's got a good fastball, elevates it right there, then he can and come back with some off-speed stuff that works well and you might remember he was with the Braves uh, just a couple of years ago and he had kind of a double toe tap on his on his delivery but he's eliminated that he's changed it he's pitched well at home coming off a very good start against Cleveland where he did walk five and in seven innings but only gave up one hit and another key for John Gant he's only given up one home run all year long well hopefully that Vulcan changeup won't allow him to hit his spots or the Braves bats we hope will be an active work for game three of this series he's already shown Shaking his head. I know you are at home too. Hopefully, we'll be smiling after game three of this series here in St. Louis. When we come back, Mike Fultonevich chats with Paul Bird here in the Cardinals Nest as he gets set for game three of our series here in St. Louis.
Welcome back to St. Louis, everybody, where it is smoking hot. And you know what? When you are a pitcher and you can throw 100 miles an hour, the temptation when you get in a jam is to throw 102. Why? Because you can and because there's much less time for the hitter to react and you find out what a pitcher really believes. Well, get Mike Fultonavich in a jam now and he doesn't believe that 102 works anymore. He believes that hitting his spot and being a better pitcher is the answer. Yes, we've watched him grow up in front of our eyes and it has been a blast. Here's his thoughts on that transition. It's just, just the confidence, really. Um, okay. Just going in pitch by pitch, throwing every pitch with conviction, and just basically you're not going to hit it. You know, if they do, you know, tip your cap. And, um, you know, that's what they're they're paid to do is, is hit the ball. But I think just confidence and, and really taking things slow. I think um, when I got in jams in the past, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd go quick instead of you know thinking pitch by pitch. You know, I just want to go up there and throw harder and throw the slider harder or, or throw this curveball as nasty as it can be instead of just focusing. You know, I'm going to throw this inside on his hands or outside. You know, make him swing at this curveball and you know throw one. <laughs> up in the zone, it's just them things you got to think mm -hmm. about instead of instead of going out, out there trying to throw 102 two every time, which um you know I've seen in the past they can they can hit it, they can time yeah. that stuff up. So you just got to really go out there and pitch instead of throw when when them situations are handed to you. Colty grew up down the street, Joliet, Illinois. He did grow up a Cards fan, and a couple years back he beat Wainwright in this stadium with mom and dad cheering. Well now he's got Brittany in the stands with son Jet. He's got some cool sunglasses and a nice hat on, ready to endure this heat. We will be back soon. Braves go for the sweep against St. Louis. We'll see if Fulte can cage the monster and tame the heat.
in America's Midwest. It's 92 degrees at the moment. Feels like 103. It's even hotter than that down on the field as we get you set for the third and final game of this series. From the stay hot category, this is the ceremonial first pitch. Going. Safe to say not much has gone right for the Cardinals in this series, including that moment. Apparently the grounds crew member is all right. In fact, that grounds crew member got clawed up a couple of years ago when he rescued a wayward cat here at Bush Stadium. He's got it working, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he does. And yet he keeps showing up for work. <laughs> there you go. So does this guy, John Ganton. Why wouldn't you after this kind of line against the Cleveland Indians? The one hit he allowed, I'm told, was a slow roller that hit the third base bag. That's the only hit the Tribe was able to muster. He did walk five. Struck out four. He's never faced his former team, the Braves. This will be his first appearance, and he makes his fifth start of the year. He's two and one at home, 320 ERA. Braves offense in high gear in this series. They certainly were yesterday, pounding out 11 runs against the Cardinals. The Braves seek their fifth sweep of the year and their first in St. Louis since the 2012 season. Only one change on the Toyota starting lineup card. That is Charlie Culberson gets the start at third base. Tyler Flowers back in behind the plate as well. He had to leave game one with a cramp issue. He's good to go for the series wrap up. And a sea of red has gathered in St. Louis for the Braves and Cardinals game three today. Ender a couple of hits in the series batting 251. And the first pitch of July is off the plate. One ball, no strikes. That's right. Fresh month. Have a good month, everybody. Braves had a good June. Winning 14, losing 11. As Gant turns it loose and misfires low. Ball two. Joe mentioned in our opening comments that Gant is filling Michael Waka's spot. He's out with an oblique problem, and he will be out for a while, apparently. Which certainly doesn't help the Cardinals, who begin play five and a half games behind the Brewers, and they've lost their last three games. Gant was pitching well at AAA. He was 5-1 and one with a 165 ERA. Lifted toward left and Ozuna drifts back. He's got the glasses on and makes the play for the first out. Gant sits in the low 90s, 90 to 93, with that change up, his primary off speed pitch and a curveball, but has only allowed one home run this year, and that was to a left handed batter some five or six outings ago, and still just a 192 batting average against him. So Ozzie Albies is the next Braves hitter. Ozzie really turned around his June over the last two weeks. He's riding a 10 game hitting streak. Entering action this afternoon. And he is our greatness made here feature presented by Synovus. Yeah the amazing thing about his 10 game streak is he has 21 hits. Straightened up with that pitch and it was called a strike. Be a hot day for Gabe Morales behind the plate too. You might see a lot of strikes called. And that one is corked foul past first and Albies behind one ball two strikes. You're right about that hit total for Ozzy. Remember he had a stretch of 26 games where he had 20 total hits. So to say he's turned it around and made some adjustments is quite obviously the case. Uh -huh. He's raised his average 27 points since the batting streak started. One ball two strikes. And another chance on the left side who's going to catch this one. Jerko the shortstop drifts out and makes the play for the second out. So Freddie Freeman's up for the first time. It's been a quiet series for Freddie. He's got a couple of hits. It hasn't struck out in this series which is a noticeable improvement. He has been strikeout prone over the last couple of weeks. And 
and swung at the first one fouled it back off the catcher's mask. It's not Yadi Molina back there but Francisco Pena. Molina available to pinch hit for St. Louis day game after the night game last night. No balls and a strike. And a ground ball into the shift. And the throw to first is in plenty of time. It's three up, three down for Gant in the top of the first. Mike Fultonovich will go to the mound next. Tonovich on a humid 92 degree day. Special day for Mike and his wife Brittany. His baby boy Michael Jet Fultonevich is here in St. Louis. <laughs> Got the shades on too. Mike's Good parents ball. are here from Manuka, Illinois as well. And hopefully Joe will have some luck against the Cardinals. This has been a tough place for him to pitch for whatever reason. Isn't that the truth? But he's in the top three in four different categories here, including the, his ERA at 214, opponent's batting average second at 191. His four keys to pitching success today. Well, number one, PPI, pitches per inning, will be really important how long he's out on the mound. And payback is right, Chip. Last year, two starts, it was really ugly. I'll give you the numbers in a second. Matt Carpenter is the St. Louis third baseman. First of the day for Mike is up and away, and his day is underway with ball one. Two starts, 0 and 2, a 17. 55 ERA. He gave up 13 runs in six and two thirds innings. Payback is due. Carpenter coming off an eight homer month of June, and he takes upstairs two balls, no strikes. Mention the pitches per inning. It has been about 20 pitches per inning for Mike this year. He's averaging 92 pitches per start for Atlanta. And he's averaging a little over five innings per outing. So when he gets the, to two strikes, he has trouble sometimes finishing off the bat. And here he's gone three and oh to Carpenter to start the day for St. Louis. Three oh pitch and on four straight the Cardinal leadoff man is on. Cardinals don't walk a lot, but Carpenter's a good leadoff man. He's aboard in front of Tommy Pham, batting second for St. Louis. Jose Martinez bats third on Mike Matheny's Toyota starting lineup card. Harrison Bader is in right. Pena behind the plate for Molina. Gant, of course, pitches and bats ninth. Pham is 0 for his last 29 and takes a strike. Took a little off and called a strike. It's quickly nothing in two. And that's smothered behind the plate by Tyler. A ball and two strikes for the.
Cardinals outfielder Tommy Pham. He's got good numbers against him. Three for four with a homer. Two and two. Just look at Mike's face already. Braves wearing their dark blue road uniforms. You can already see a little rosy flush on the face of Fulton Evich. As he offers his ninth pitch and it almost hit fan. Full you know, count. Baseball players are so superstitious and you don't want to break a streak. And the Braves have won the first two games here wearing the blue jerseys and even on a hot day. I think the pitcher gets to select which one he wants to wear. He don't want to break that streak the Braves are on even on a hot day. And strike three. Fam caught looking. He got a slider. And one on one out for Martinez. Almost backed up on him. Mike struck out four. He walked four. And it's five and a third against Cincinnati. So here's Martinez hitting a cool 300. One for eight in the series that hit a home run one of his eight he hit in June for St. Louis. And a fastball in this time ball one. If ever there's a day where double plays will be huge for either pitcher it's today. Quick outs. Ball two. Well, St. Louis, not the only place that's suffering through this oppressive heat and humidity. At Wrigley Field in Chicago, of all places, the on field temperature yesterday was 123 degrees. Goodness. Heat index of 107. First the pitch. It was so bad that three Minnesota Twins players left the game early because of what they called heat related illness. All three of those players got IVs during or after the game. Here in St. Louis, Cardinal fans are used to this, but it is still oppressively hot. And just think, 20 years ago they played in this weather on the turf, right, at the old ballpark. So Mike's gone to three balls on all three of the Cardinal hitters so far in the game. Carpenter walked on four pitches. Pham struck out on a slider on a full count. Now Martinez three and one. And a bouncing ball. There's that double play chance. One there. Two there. And the inning is over. Lead off walk is taken care of by a double play. And we go to the second inning. are coming up here in St. Louis. 
Well, what a day for Nick Markakis yesterday. The Braves right fielder has had a heck of a series. A grand slam yesterday. Four of his six RBIs in the first two games against the Cardinals. Jumped out of here, too. Hands inside the baseball. Good finish. Took the team lead in RBIs now at 56. 1,073 career games between Grand Slams for Nick Markakis. Remarkable. Nick now with 104 hits, third in the league in hitting, fifth in the league in RBIs, first, as Joe said, on the team in that category. The pitch to him is downstairs, ball one. That made him move his feet. Two balls, no strikes. <laughs> Ordinarily, you'd say for the Cardinals, the best thing that could help them maybe is to get out of town and go on the road, maybe get a break from the weather. Well, they get to go to Arizona next. Go to Phoenix. Run under Robbie Ray, Zach Grinke, Patrick Corbin. Then to San Francisco, then to Chicago to play the White Sox for a couple of games. Markek is now ahead, three balls with a strike. Get ready and delivers, and it's sharply hit towards second. Nice play by Colton Wong, and the scoop at first. We've talked about the Cardinals' defensive issues this year. Wong is not part of those. He may be their best active infielder defensively on the roster at the moment. He did a nice job of taking an extra step before that jump, too. He didn't rush it, and he got a little bit more on his throw. Nice play. So Tyler Flowers bats for the first time today. The Braves catcher one for three in the series. And that's down and in ball one. Tyler was ready to go yesterday if needed. After having to come out of the game Friday night with cramps. Ball two. I don't know what the Braves Gatorade or Pedialyte bill is going to be, but I can imagine it's going to be pretty steep. Not only after this game, but the series in New York with the Yankees. And sharply hit down the left field line. That's in for a base hit. Tyler Flowers rounds first. He's on his way to second. That's the first hit for either club. A ringing one out double for the Braves catcher. Tyler was certainly. Taking it easy after he got around first. Hustling there, but when he saw it was going to be an easy double, shut it down and not a bad idea today. Yeah, both catchers are going to bear the brunt of the punishment, the pitchers too, as well as the home plate umpire, as you said. No rest for the weary. Here's Acuna. Ronald's first hit back from the disabled list was a mammoth home run on a 3 0 count. Is sixth of the year. Let's see if the Braves can strike first here. The pitch is popped into shallow left. Ozuna got a good jump and makes the play. Two out. Charlie Culberson gets the start at third base for Johan Camargo today. Charlie's on a 306 batting average run since the 1st of May. It's quite a comeback. Just more playing time, you know, helped him get in a groove. And this is really when he's been at his best, two out runners in scoring position. Good chance for Atlanta against Gant to strike first. Flowers has a huge lead. And the pitch. 
is in for a strike. I was talking to Charlie yesterday before the game. He said with his career in Colorado and his career with the Dodgers playing with the Braves is the first time he's gotten as many as 13 straight games in the lineup ever. And to your point Joe. Yeah he's in a nice rhythm. Well you don't worry about going 0 for 3 or 0 for 4. When that happens. That one all the way to the backstop no chance for Pena. And Tyler is at third base with two outs. Because the next time you play in his previous stints in the big leagues that next time out might be a week away and you go over three or over four again and start piling up. I like this play. Uh, it seems kind of insignificant just to move over to third base. But as bad as their defense is, as many errors as they're making, you put the ball in play, you might get the guy in from third, and the Cardinals might help you. One ball, one strike. And a line drive into left field, a base hit. Culberson comes through again. He's on his way to second. Second Atlanta double of the inning, and Charlie has his 20th RBI. He is something. Back in the lineup, big hit gives the Braves the lead. Outstanding work by Charlie again. Fought off a pitch that was running in on him. Good pitcher's pitch. Charlie spoiled it. That is his seventh hit in 16 at bats with runners in scoring position and two outs this year. Wow. And so with uh, Dansby Swanson scheduled, the Cardinals will go ahead and walk him intentionally. And they'll try to end the inning with Mike Fulton Evich, who now has been staked to a 1 0 lead. So you see the situations that have given Gantt trouble. That reared its happy head for the Braves here in the second. Yeah, a little different working out the stretch for him, huh? Little pop down the first baseline. Martinez will not have a chance. Strike one. We'll keep you posted on all the other action in the big leagues today. The big game for Braves fans is the Nationals and the Phillies. They're ramping up that four game series. At the moment, Washington leads 1 0. That is Gio Gonzalez and Jake Arietta. Arietta had an awful month of June for the Phillies. Now it's straight back. Yeah today at least you kind of pull for the Nationals. For a split of that series. Yeah perfect world we talked about that on Friday night brave sweep here they split. Game two games or game and a half on everybody. Be nice. Atlanta leads the division by three full games at the start of action today and lead one nothing with Mike Fulton Evich in the box. And Mike missed that by a country mile. Gant strikes him out but surrenders the game's first run. Charlie Culberson's two out run scoring double gives the Braves a one nothing lead.
made the last out of the last half inning so he gets a full minute 50 minute 45 to get loose which should take about three seconds Joe as hot as it is that's the truth you know and you make the last out try to milk it get a little rest before you go out there and Paul Bird I'm just curious from a starting pitcher standpoint what can you do to try to stay fresh in the dugout. Well there's a few things I think you know we all have experience in the Midwest so this is a different kind of heat out here it's stifling and the first thing you have to do is you have to prehydrate you have to know going in the game that you're going to lose five to ten pounds in water weight so salt tablets a lot of uh, energy drinks whatever you prefer but you have to prehydrate that's step number one and then going out there Joe you don't need all of your normal warm-up pitches in the bullpen you have to understand that a long inning out here is what kills you, not going out back and forth, back and out, but a long inning where you're zapped. So in the bullpen, you don't want to throw an extremely long bullpen. So if you don't have a pitch, you don't necessarily have to stay down there over and over until you get it. You say, I'll find it on the mound in a few and during the game. So it's a balancing act. And uh, you were telling us a couple of nights ago about a, a drink or some substance that George Poulos has for the team. Yes. So uh -huh. head trainer for the Braves, George Poulos, he has them drinking uh, the right stuff, and it's what NASA gives their astronauts to keep them hydrated and in a special environments. And we'll see if Mike has the right stuff. So far, That's he's it. got an early lead with the four, five, and six hitters coming up. Marcelo Zuna leading off for the Cardinals. This is one of those games where you. In the old days, you might see the, the players actually use cabbage leaves. They'd soak them in ice water and put cabbage leaves under their caps and go out there with basically lettuce on their heads, try to stay cool. I saw guys do that. I, I didn't. I didn't. Li I don't like cabbage. <laughs> but I saw guys do that, and I don't know if it worked for them or not. But it was mighty hot in the old days of the turf fields, Kansas City, here, St. Louis, other places too. That Midwest, Joe. I remember you telling me about. Plastic on guys' cleats would actually melt. Yeah, it gets soft. So yeah. guys in the dugout are sitting in buckets of ice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and they'd be stone cold dry by the time they came back in from the field. <laughs> this game, I imagine, is hard enough to play even under optimal conditions. For you, Paul, as a pitcher, you, Joe, as a position player, how hard is it to put the heat and the humidity out of your head once the game gets going? And can you, I guess? So for me as a pitcher you can I mean we talked about the dark jersey but Fulty's even in sleeves out there today so that tells me that he does not expect for the heat to be a problem for him. You want to be efficient with your pitches you want to avoid the long inning and you want to be careful that sweat does not run down on your hand before you're getting ready to deliver a pitch and you throw uh, you know a slider that slips off your fingers. Honestly it's going to sound weird I love playing in hot weather. Grew up in Oklahoma doing the same you know as a mm -hmm. kid played in the Coast League in Albuquerque Tucson and Phoenix where it was 105 to 110 all the time it didn't bother me was it uncomfortable yeah but I'd rather play hot than cold and I wonder if in the case of well both for Gant and Fulton Evich, you mentioned John's from uh, Savannah I grew up in Manuka Illinois that's a couple hundred miles away from St. Louis toward Chicago it gets hot up there too so Maybe this won't be as big a deal for them as it might be for, say, Steven Strasburg, who pitched in San Diego. I think I think it is. It's more relative, Chip, to what you've been doing lately, not what you really grew up in as much as where have you been pitching for the last six months, you know, or the last two that months. That makes sense. Jeff Supon, one of the pitchers with Kansas City, when I got out there, I got traded from Philadelphia to Kansas City, and I asked him because guys struggled with it and he said Paul you have to get out in it he goes if you think you're going to stay back in the locker room and save it all for the game that you start he goes you're going to be really surprised how it zaps you but if you get out and you run your poles your sprints anaerobic and aerobic get your work in in the outfield in the heat then take it easy on game day and then when you get out there your body's used to it I couldn't agree more I, I think that's very important acclimate Three strikeouts for Fulton Evich. He's gotten the first two Cardinals here in the second. Harrison Bader is the Cardinal right fielder. And he hits with the bases empty and looks at a ball outside. Mike thought that should have been a strike. Looked to be off the plate though. One ball, no strikes. Yeah. 
I mentioned in the first inning, Paul, how important double plays would be today and mm -hmm. because it would save pitches. And sure enough, uh, Mike was able to get one and limit his first inning total of 14, which was excellent. And that's been his best pitch. Uh huh. So here are the Cardinals gearing up for 99 mile an hour fastballs, and Mike's dropping 87 mile an hour sliders in for strikes. And it's easy, too. He's not working hard for it. Bader had that covered, but he's still behind a ball and two strikes. Joe and I used to work hard for 86. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought Mike came out a little pumped up in the first inning, really falling off the mound, trying to air mm -hmm. it out. Cost him a walk. This inning a little more under control. June was a terrific month for Fulton a 113 ERA. And did his man go? Yes, he did. He just struck out the side. So four strikeouts for Fulton Bader didn't think so. He's cooling off the Cardinals on a steaming hot day in St. Louis. Top of the order coming up. It's 1 0 Atlanta in front. Xfinity delivers the fastest internet with the best in-home Wi-Fi experience. Delta Airlines. And by the All-South Highway Safety Team. The All-South Highway Safety Team reminds you to play it safe by never mixing drinking and driving. Hey, the Braves are 35-11 and 11 this year when they scored the game's first run. They've done that with a tally in the second inning. Let's see if the... Top of the order can spark a, another offensive surge here in the third with Ender Inciarte ready to lead off. Ender's led off the last nine games. He's got a 349 on base percentage in that stretch for Atlanta. And with Albies getting hot and Marquecas doing what he's doing in the middle of the order, Ender scored 10 runs in those games. Freddie do third in the inning. First three hitters were retired in order by Gant in the first inning and that's downstairs ball two. You know he still has a little bit of a double leg kick. It's modified. The first one's not quite as pronounced as it was with the Braves but he still has a little bit of a start there. And then another kick. Line towards center and a nice running catch by Tommy Pham and Enders retired for the second time. He's 0 for 2 one out. If I remember correctly, Gant didn't even know he had that double leg kick when he was a younger pitcher. His catcher said, why are you doing that? And he said, well, what do you mean, doing what? He said, you're pumping your leg twice when you make your windup. He said, I am? <laughs> well, he was, and he stuck with it.
But that's been cleaned up by the Cardinals. As Ozzy shoots one to second. Colton Wong's got it. A one second sacker to another, two outs. Freddie Freeman, the batter, he bounced out to third. That was into a shift back in the opening inning. I've always liked the Cardinals uniform. It's always been classic. Doesn't change much. They have some alternate jerseys and what have you, but their Sunday afternoon cap with that Cardinal sitting on a bat, that's pretty sharp. That's taken low for Freddie Freeman. One ball, no strikes. And you saw that sleeve patch on the Cardinal jerseys. That's honoring the late great Red Shandienst, who passed away within the last month. Great ambassador for the Cardinals, terrific player, member of the Milwaukee Braves, managed here. Great ambassador for the game, too. You bet. And rolled foul. Opening day here is. As you can imagine, a civic festival. And one of the great sights that the Cardinals have is all of their Hall of Fame players come out and they wear their Cardinal Red Blazers and they're introduced to the crowd as well as the opening day roster. That is spine tingling stuff. And fouled away by Freddie. One and two the count. Freddie's getting weird patterns thrown at him. There's the latest. Inductees. He's getting a lot of slow off speed stuff early. They come back with back with fastball stuff once they get ahead. There's another off speed pitch. He's not getting two pitches the same in a row, and uh, it, it's doing the number on him. I mentioned that Ozzy had increased his average 27 points during his streak. Well, Freddie's been in a streak where his average has dropped 26 points. Yeah, before this run started, Freddie led the league in hitting on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Still fourth overall in the league, but you're right, the hits have been few and far between with all those strikeouts. That's a good graphic to show you why they put a shift on for him. I'm surprised there's not more to left center. Because that's his that's in his mind, that's where he wants to go. Yep, the old line drive over the shortstop's head. Mm -hmm. He's making Gant work here. Two balls, two strikes. There's a liner the other way. Ozuna, though, is going to track it down. One of the harder hit balls for Freeman in this series. He hit it the other way sharply, but the Braves and Freeman are retired in order in the third.
Center. Today's Built for Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. After we finish up with the Cardinals, we head to Yankee Stadium. Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, and the high-flying Bronx Bombers lie in wait for the Bravos. We open up a three-game series there tomorrow night with Anibal Sanchez getting the opening series assignment for the Braves staff. New York Yankees third in the American League at runs scored. They are first in homers. No surprise there. Second in slugging, third in on base percentage. And a game behind the Red Sox, whom they play later tonight. The Yankees have a brilliant bullpen. Yeah, the overall, their ERA second in the American League in ERA. We'll see Jonathan Loisiga. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. In game one, Domingo Herman in game two, CeCe Sabathia on the 4th of July. And Fultonevich with his second four pitch walk of the game puts Colton Wong aboard to start the third inning. Struck out the side in the second inning. Unfortunately, the walk comes to the leadoff batter. And Francisco Pena, the catcher was signed as a minor league free agent by the Cardinals after last season. Got a hit yesterday. It was the only hit he had in the month of June. Pena was originally a member of the Mets organization. The Royals signed him as a minor league free agent. Baltimore acquired him in a cash deal. And then the Cardinals got him on a minor league free agent contract right before Christmas. Colton Evich has thrown six consecutive balls to start the third inning. Runner goes, good jump, and fouled away. Two balls and a strike. Well, those offensive problems for Pena, well, you can look up and down their lineup. He's got plenty of help in that regard. Mm -hmm. Sam's 0 for 30. Colton Wong's 0 for his last 10 and hitting under 200. Jerko's at 236 with a bunch of strikeouts. That's also shocking for this Cardinal team. A lot of strikeouts. A lot of homers, but a low batting average. Three balls and a strike. The Cardinal pitcher John Gant waits on deck. Prefer to see him with one out. Runner goes. Strike three. Throw to second. Runner scampers back to first and beats the relay throw. Strike two, I beg your pardon. Full count for Pena. And a heads up play by Wong. He slammed on the brakes and got back safely. You don't see that happen very often to take that many steps and still be able to get back. If he was running 3-1, you'd think he'd run 3-2. Let's see if he is. He is. Swing and a miss. This time the throw does go through, and it's short hop Sazi at the bag. Pena swings and misses. Five strikeouts for Fulton Evich, and Wong safely at second for Gant. Second stolen base. He's been caught three times, but it was the short hop that Ozzy was trying to corral. That was the difference. So Jose Okendo with a word for John Gant. Who is 0 for 9, three strikeouts, one bunt. As a Cardinal hitter. Turned it loose and was a little late. Strike one. Four. 
Five strikeouts, a walk, and a double play. That's the out distribution for Fulton Evich so far. That material in those sleeves that Paul Bird was referring to, some of that material it wicks away some of the perspiration. That helps keep it from running, running down onto his pitching hand. Freddie Freeman always wears sleeves, same type of material. So there's the second out, six strikeouts for Fulton Evich, and now Matt Carpenter hits. Carpenter walked on four to start the game. A couple of big cranes right outside the stadium as they are adding on to the Cardinal Nation village over there behind left field. Yeah, Their version was, of the battery, I guess. Yeah, that was in the original plans when this ballpark first opened, but the economic downturn forced those plans to be put to the side for a while. As Carpenter digs in and fouls one away, strike one. They've Good got first pitch. Fox Sports Studios across the street. Shops and restaurants, clubhouse stores, and as I like to say to Tweak the best fans in baseball, as they call themselves. They ripped off the rooftop bleachers from Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a former Cub to get over it, too, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kind of tough because yeah. I lived here as a yeah. kid, so I guess I can say that. No balls yeah. and a strike. Torn. You're you're torn yes. over that. Yes. Yes. Did you come to many cut games? Growing up here? Here, a few, yeah. I was here for Lou Brock's 3,000th hit, which was fun. That's neat. Off Dennis Lamp. Infield hit off his leg. Low balls at a strike. And a bouncing ball foul. I was here the day that Bruce Benedict was told the night before he wasn't going to be playing on a Sunday afternoon. And Bruce went out to dinner and stayed out late and was surprised to find out, oh, it's 102 degrees, and yes, you're catching today. He got to run happy days, run sprints to try to get loose. Let's say exactly. Yes. <laughs> See if Mike can pitch around another leadoff walk here. He's way ahead of Matt Carpenter. And here it is. He did. He just wow. struck out the side again. That is seven strikeouts in three innings for Fulton Evich. He works around the leadoff free pass. He leads 1 0 with Nick Markakis ready to lead off.
Too much for the Cardinals after three innings. That's your Sherwin Williams game summary. What a start for Mike. Only a couple of walks to to dot what is an awesome start with the strikeouts. 14 pitches in the first, 16 in the second when he struck out the side, 15 last inning striking out the side with a walk. So a total of 45 through three. Good work. For a man that's averaging a little over 17 pitches per inning of work this year. So it's 1 0. Braves in front. Nick Markakis was retired on a nice play by Colton Wong up the middle. Flowers had Acuna to follow against John Gant. And a good hook has Markakis behind in the count. Washington leads the Phillies. That's 3 0 now, bottom five at Citizens Bank Park. We will see the Nationals right after the All Star break. That is our first series after the All Star game, which does take place in Washington, D.C. The Nats are currently five games behind the Braves. The pitch. That's Gio Gonzalez on the mound for the Nats, his first start after that horrific start in Tampa. Yeah, he's 62 pitches if after an inning plus. Yeah. Jake Arrieta for the Phillies, who had a forgettable June. Hard hit ball to first, and Martinez will make the play, and there's out number one. Boy, Nick's hitting the ball hard. Yep. Talked about the tough luck he's hitting in before the game Friday night. That kind of continued Friday, and then yesterday a big day with the home run. Flowers picked up the game's first hit, a one out double. He scored on Charlie Culberson's two out double. And one of the keys last night to the Braves scoring 11 runs was they were five for 10 with runners in scoring position, one for one today. That's hit to third. Carpenter's got it, and his lob to first is in time. I should say one for three. There were some other guys that hit besides Charlie with the runner in scoring position, but one for three. And here's Acuna. He swung at the first pitch and popped up to left in the second inning. Gantz retired six in a row. Let's see if Acuna can keep the inning alive. Was that called a strike? No, it said he bunted at it. Acuna can't believe it. He pointed at Ronald and called a strike. Like to me, he pulled it back. Maybe that initial stab is what the umpire saw, and that influenced the call. So the board has it incorrect. The count is one ball, one strike. Popped up again, this time to Carpenter at third. He's battling the sun, and he makes the shoulder high catch, and that retires the side. Gant set down seven straight. Tommy Pham leads off the Cardinals down a run.
Sherwin-Williams. Your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. And by SunTrust. Confidence starts here. That's the Jewel Box in Forest Park, one of the great public spaces here in St. Louis. Braves having a good time so far in the Gateway City, sweeping the first two games, leading game three, one nothing. Mike fulton has struck out seven Cardinal hitters. St. Louis has put one ball in play, and that was a double play. Their first time through the order. His fam, he struck out looking on a 3-2 pitch back in the opening frame. And he didn't get that strike one. I like how Tyler has called for some first pitch breaking balls. He did that on Carpenter with a runner at second in the third inning. Eventually struck him out but got a hit in the count. Same here. There's a ball in play and it's hit high in the air toward left. Acuna retreats and he's got it for the first out. So Pham 0 for 2 and 0 for his last 31 at the dish. Here's Martinez. By the way, Mike, spread around the out opportunities. Mm -hmm. Make it easy on yourself if you can. Martinez hit into a double play in the first inning. Way outside, ball one. Martinez really persisted in a long and extended minor league career. 887 minor league games before he got to the big leagues for the first time two years ago. And you might remember the Cardinals had Matt Adams playing first base. They didn't think he was going to be the solution for them. They traded him to the Braves when Freddie Freeman got hurt. Matt Carpenter played some first base. He's now back at third. They then needed some power at first, and well, they got Martinez from Kansas City. It's kind of like a Rubik's Cube, the way they kept kind of using people, but at different positions. And almost out of position, it mm -hmm. seemed. Yep. And as we've said so many times, Cardinals defense has not been real good this year. Martinez has made seven errors at first base. What a change up. He almost could have swung around and swung at it again. So Mike's 2 2 pitch. Tomahawked right back toward us. And I think he might have gotten Tyler Flowers on the backswing. Yep, the glove was up and the bat clunked Tyler there. Two balls, two strikes. Another change of beauty, but Martinez laid off. Here comes the 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He took a little off, and that's strikeout number eight. The one that he swung at for strike two was at 88. This one was at 87. Great job. Mike strikeout high is 11. He did that on June 1st against the Nationals. He went nine innings on two hits that day. He's got similar stuff in this one. All of a sudden the fastball is starting to crackle and find the mark with the change up and slider. That's awfully tough for the hitters. I was just going to say his fastball command is vastly better than it was in the first inning. Fouled back by Ozuna 97 mile an hour fastball. So now Ozuna's got to think about change up and slider not mm -hmm. to mention the high heat again. Which got him in the second inning. 
Mike's ERA at 214 coming in is actually better on the road, slightly better, 2.09. As you'd expect, he's going to the rosin bag a lot to make sure that hand is as dry as can be on this thick day in St. Louis. And now his one two pitch. Fouled off Flowers. We'll do it again. Ozuna has not enjoyed seeing Mike Fulton Evich. He's two for 17 against him in his career, including. A swing and a miss today. I'd like to see if he would swing, go back to his old ways and swing at a bad slider. Let's see. Got a heater and he didn't miss it. So Ozuna singles on a 2 2 count. That's the first Cardinal hit. He got something up. I mean, the fastball up. And I think that's where Tyler wanted it. Looked like he was set up away and had a bit of a high target. That's where it was delivered. And Mike bent at the waist now. Goes to the rosin bag again. Dansby's going to come in from shortstop and give him a little more time to catch his breath here. This is a great idea. Stay out there until the umpire comes and gets you. And good in that Gabe Morales was using some common sense there and understood the situation and allowed a bit of a rest. So Jerko's the batter. He struck out his first time up. Jerko with five homers on the year. Ozuna the runner at first. And off the plate, ball one. I got to say too, I, I, on a hot day like this, when you're you're flush and you're throwing as hard, your your mechanics are such for Mike that you're really kind of jerking your head. And when it's hot, that'll cause some dizziness too. Two balls at a strike. I mean, you'd, you'd like to see him take a page out of the Julio Tehran book from Friday night, where Julio. He have given a little bit on velocity but his all his efforts were directed more at home plate and not spinning off. It worked terrifically for Julio. Two balls one strike. Instead to first. Heaviest workload for Fulton Evich in this inning. Twenty two pitches so far. And number 23 missed upstairs and it's three and one. And that's kind of what I was talking about right there. That was a 94 fastball that was thrown with very little effort. Very good mechanics. He didn't fall off to the first base side. Again I think that's been his best pitch. Mm -hmm. That's why I wish he had thrown it. To Ozuna. Ozuna. Right. It feels like 103. Officially, it's 92, but the temperature on the field is a lot hotter than that. As a full count pitch is coming, and that just missed. So a single and a walk, all of this coming with two outs, and now Bader's coming up, and now Chuck Hernandez is coming out. 
So 25 pitches, and you can understand the Cardinals' game plan. They can't touch Fulton Evich by and large. They're going to try to wait him out, make him throw five, six, seven pitches per hitter to try to get him out. I, I wish Chuck had taken a bottle of water with him. You know, take a bottle of water with him and splash it on his head if he wanted to, take a drink, whatever. So Mike has walked three. He struck out eight. And he's got Bader up there who took strike three his first time up. One nothing Atlanta the lead in jeopardy here with two outs the Braves got a two out hit from Charlie Culberson to score the game's only run. See if Bader obliges and gets out quickly here to end the fourth. Well these guys go up there swinging don't they. Well this guy falls back swings up. And with Mike's fastball as good as it is from the letters up on Bader. Gonna be mighty tough day for Harrison. If Fulte puts it where he wants. Yeah I would think that uh, Cardinal uniform you talked about. That golden bat would be a perfect mm -hmm. roadmap for that fastball. Yeah. See if that somehow some way Bader can. On that uppercut. Get to the intersection. One one pitch. Now he's got him set up. Into the upper deck. Looks like the Cardinals had a giveaway today. I think it's floppy hat day. A lot of fans wearing the Cardinal red Gilligan's Island type hat with a blue band. Great day for it. And now the one two pitch two on two out. One more slider. Long inning. Thirtieth pitch of the inning. And the two two. Over there's the plate high, but high. Yeah, there's that high fastball he just laid off. And this is where you worry about Mike. You can see the frustration. Long inning. Didn't get that call and now he's got to throw a full count pitch. And he got him with a slider. So that's nine strikeouts for Fulton Evich. The Cardinals strand runners two and three in the game and after an extended fourth Braves lead one nothing Fulton Evich due up third.
Terry, as we join you again from St. Louis, four steamy innings are complete. Atlanta leads 1-0. Just three total hits here at Bush Stadium. Our final visit to St. Louis this year. The Cardinals will come to Atlanta in late September for their lone visit to SunTrust Park. Gantz retired seven straight Braves. The man that scored the game's first run is in the box. Charlie Culberson doubled home Tyler Flowers back in the second inning. And that's taken downstairs for a ball. When the Cardinals come to town, if fans from St. Louis head to Atlanta, hopefully they'll be greeted by the great Walter Banks, great ambassador for the Braves. First the 1 0 pitch. It's Walter Banks birthday today. Hey happy birthday Walter. I think Walter's 29. That, he was 29 last year. So case okay, 28 this 28 year. 28, 28 <laughs> this year is right the ageless wonder. Walter happy birthday can't wait to see you when we get back home. As Charlie's ahead in the count three balls no strikes. Braves have the new Walter Banks collection, by the way. You can get a t shirt with right. Walter's face on it at SunTrust Park. Good looking rendition, too. And four straight. Leadoff man on for Atlanta. Let's cash this one in. Second walk for Gant. The first was an intentional walk of Dansby Swanson, who's coming up now. In his last start against Cleveland. The seven innings pitch was a career high for John Gant and the five walks were also. He pitched a lot for the Braves in 2016 20 20 games seven starts 50 innings. Went one and four with a 486 ERA. Braves got him from the Mets. I think that was Kelly Johnson one. One and one Uribe. That was the first trade, right? Yes. Well, he pitched great at Memphis. Cardinals Triple A club went five and one there. Two and two with the big club this year, but trailing by a run. With Dansby up there, Swanson four for nine in the series, including a three hit game Friday night. Yeah, I think after Kelly got traded to New York the first time, uh, he just kept his apartment when he came back to the Braves, figuring, eh, I'm going to need this later on. That's a strike. Well, if the Mets decide to make DeGrom or Syndergaard available, maybe the Braves can throw Kelly in again. They would take him right now. <laughs> no spring training. <laughs> Hadn't played in a year. He could help them. And he's got a good arm behind the plate, so you run at your peril here. And a breaking ball stayed high. One ball, one strike. In the air to right, and Bader is there. And back to first is Culberson with one out. That was a good attempt by Dansby to go to the other way, go the other way with a runner at first base. But watch the barrel of his bat on this little inside out type swing, but the barrel drops. And when the barrel, the angle of the barrel goes down a little bit, then the chances of a pop up increase. But a good try to go the other way. So let's see if Fultonevich can successfully sacrifice Culberson here. And a strike. What you don't want is Mike to bunt the ball so hard that they 
get the force out only at second base here. That means he would have to run the bases on this hot day oh, and come back out right. and pitch. Well, Matt Carpenter was in so close that he was actually going to be able to cover the third baseline and the first baseline. He couldn't have been more than 30 feet away. One strike. And this is one where, personally speaking, I don't mind if Mike just swings at a ball 10 feet over his head, get back in the dugout, and try to cool off before he goes back to work. Whoa. That'll make you throw on the brakes. Yeah, I'm with you. The 0 2 pitch. And punted foul, and that is out number two. But hey, Mike, go in the dugout, sit next to the AC for a minute. Yeah, this might be a telltale sequence in this in this game, in that he had to throw a lot of pitches in the bottom half of the fourth. He's up to bat there with a helmet on. That's hot. Depending on how long this inning can continue, hopefully his teammates can put together a few hits and extend the inning. But if Ender makes an early out, boy, he's right back out there. And those helmets are so hot. Are they? Oh, man. I'm sure they're even hotter with those extended, that extended protection on oh, your the face. face flap. Uh huh. Good take. Yep. Take a couple. Yeah. You can see there's some ventilation in the top of the helmet. That's new in the last couple of years. Yeah, that helps, but and it just it just seems to start pouring down your face. Alberson led off with a walk, a fly out to right, a bunt try by Fultonevich was unsuccessful. Now Ender hits with two outs. Lifted toward left. Ozuna comes in and is there. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits. A man left. The Braves have stranded a couple of runners. They lead 1 0. Today, and you know what? We've got some players who are hot as well. Mike Fultonavich carving up the Cardinals with 100 mile an hour heat and a nasty slider sitting 87, 88 miles an hour. He has caged the monster as promised and putting a show in front of his family. 
in front of these Cardinals fans. And if you're watching on TV back home as well, only three walks to nine strikeouts and only four innings pitched. He won't have a no hitter, only given up one so far. Hey, Paul, you still there? I'm here. What's he got to do now to conserve energy? What does he do when he goes in the dugout? Does he go down in the tunnel where it's cooler? So that's different with each pitcher. But yes, you want to go down in the tunnel. You want to sit in front of a big fan. You want to get the towel with ammonia water draped over you. You want to take deep breaths. And if you need to, you go up in the clubhouse where there's air conditioning and it's even cooler. Well, one possible aid for Fulton Evich here. He's got the seven, eight, nine hitters coming up for the Cardinals. He had a very heavy workload last inning. He's up to 77 pitches. And he's got Wong, Pena, and then the pitcher spot for the Cardinals. And I love Chip how he was tested that last inning. He struggled a little bit with his command. And throughout the game, you're usually not on the whole game from start to finish. You have to get through those moments. I thought uh, home plate umpire Gabe Morales was a little tight at times. Fulty showed his usual emotion but came back strong and got the big strikeout on a nasty slider. But he can't throw his fastball consistently for strikes today. And that's piling up the pitches for him here. I think he's having just visually to me he's struggling with his mechanics a little bit. He's trying so hard to throw strikes but he's still spinning off. He's going to come back from a 3 1 count to get a pop up. Colton Wong Ender battling the sun played that beautifully. Wow, how hard a play was that for Ender Inciarte? One out. Nicely done. Veteran out there knows how to do that. After the pitch. And not much Ender play this off to the side to get the sun on one side of the ball and get the ball out of the sun. Here's Pena. He struck out his first time. Look, we're going to talk about the heat because it is a huge issue in this game. It's a huge issue in Chicago. It's going to be hot, muggy in New York when we get there tomorrow night. The comparison that I've heard players say it's like running a mile in 90 degree weather, 95 degree weather with a wet washcloth over your face and you're trying to breathe through that cloth with all that moisture in your lung. You just don't ever feel like you completely catch your breath. Ground ball to short. That'll hug the dirt for Dansby. It's an easy out, two away. And now Gantz coming up. Mike could use a quick inning. He's got the first two in order here. Hey, Paul, you still there? I'm here. Hey, Paul, right there on that at bat, Pena is not a huge threat. He's a major league player. He could hit the ball out of the ballpark. But it appeared to me he's just trying, Mike, just trying to throw the ball in there and make him swing the bat. He just wants outs this stage of the lineup. No, and I agree. And if I'm striking out the amount of hitters that he is, I'm getting greedy. I'm wanting to strike out everybody. He's doing a great job of not overthrowing, not trying to set a, his personal record for strikeouts and saying, hey, it's more important than I give my team innings. And that happens by competing pitch by pitch. Yeah, yeah the strikeouts are just happening. He's got great, mm -hmm. he's got good stuff. As this one's rifled toward left and right at Acuna. Easy hitting for Fulton Evich. That was well needed. Now we'll see if Albies, Freeman, and Marquecas can have a long frame and extend a 1 0 Atlanta advantage.
your local Ford dealer. And the Georgia Lottery. Braves won, Cardinals nothing. We're through five in St. Louis. The World Cup round of 16 continues on Fox. A dream matchup unfolds and superstars collide when Neymar and Brazil face off with Chicharito and El Tre. Then Belgium takes on Japan. All the World Cup action starts tomorrow at 9 Eastern on Fox or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. I love Chicharito and I love Mexico. I'm a big Mexico fan. I don't even have them in the pool and yeah. I'm pulling for Mexico. Well, I have Brazil in my pool, so I don't like Mexico. Okay, that that's all right. Uh, what a game today, though. Penalty kicks, Russia prevails. Boy, that place was on fire, wasn't it? That Knocked out Spain. Yeah. What a what a crowd uh, and the, the wildness of that crowd. And was it were they in Moscow? Yeah, they were in Moscow. Yeah. Wow. And how about the final save on penalty kicks by uh -huh. the uh, Russian goaltender? Just a little kick save and a butte. Had a baby. <laughs> so can't back out for his sixth inning. He's given up a run on two hits, but no offensive support. Atlanta's bullpen is busy. Shane Carl is loosening as right guys at the right time coming up. And Gant was the last out of the inning, so he was slow to go back out to the mound to warm up. Lined into center field, a base hit for Albies. So he continues his tear. He's going to take an 11 game hitting streak into Yankee Stadium tomorrow night. Ball outer third. Top hand, top spin. Good start to the inning. I'm sure Freddie Freeman is searching for the answer to this prolonged, shall we say, dry spell at the plate. Are you seeing anything in particular, Joe, that that you noticed with the way he's swinging the bat? No, nothing really other than what I mentioned before that I thought he was just a little uh, quick to get out there on his front foot to kind of go get the ball. He's not doesn't seem like he's letting it travel like he usually does and then still uses quick bat to respond to something that might even be in on him. But if you go out there if you get out there trying to go get the pitch and you take your hands with you in other words your upper body starts going out there and your hands go with you, you don't have much left on your swing it's hard to drive the ball. If you stay back keep your hands back and then let them work trust your hands. That's when you're going to start hitting the ball hard. And he did hit the ball hard his last time up. And the, and the other way. Yes. Sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. You don't, don't know that your top half is kind of getting out there over your front foot some. The other side of it is Freddie's an aggressive hitter. We know he loves the first pitch. We know he's had great success on the first pitch. And he hasn't had any on the first pitch lately. So it's 0 and 1 to start the at bat. And quickly that gets into 0 and 2. And then he's got a fight. Yep. No balls in a strike. Ozzy at first, nobody out. He started, then stopped, and Freddie. This guy's one out of play, and again, here he is, 0 and 2. One ball, two strikes. You don't want Freddie to do anything to change his approach. You know, everything is so good on a normal basis. You want him to stay with his normal approach. You just want that if there is a mechanical thing that he and Kevin Seitzer are working on, then deal with that. Fought off foul again. Sometimes, you know, with trying to hit the ball the other way, trying to stay on it a little bit longer, you miss on some pitches you could turn on. 
and they're not shifting right now. They're playing for a double play, and this is almost the time. It's hard to do with a one and two count or zero oh and two count. It's almost like you'd like to see him try to pull one to the right side. Use that big hole where Martinez holds Albies at first. Ozzie's got a big lead, not going. And Freddie takes just off the plate. Good take there. Yeah, he's been swinging at that pitch. And as we said, with all the strikeouts that he has had, no strikeouts the last two games here in St. Louis. So he's come back from an 0-2 count to make it two and two. Runner goes, and Freddie pulls it foul. Yeah. I'm not sure how Freddie and his dad work, you know, in terms of his swing or some reinforcement with some things. We all know that when Chipper would get in a little mini slump, he's making a call to Larry, mm -hmm. and Larry's coming to town, and they're going to work on some things. Well, Freddie Freeman's dad is here, too, came in for this series, and I'm sure he's looking and analyzing what he sees of Freddie and if anybody knows his swing it's his dad. Pitch is piling up for Gant here in the sixth the 2 2 count. I like this I like running on 2 2 here. Uh, it makes somebody move to the bag shortstop or second baseman that's just another hole for Freeman. To work to work. Let's see if he's going again. He's not. And Freddie fouled it away. Good swing. Nobody up in the Cardinals pen. Freddie's about to see an eighth pitch. Gant's thrown 66 of them in total. Looks like Shane Carl's going to come on and pitch next for the Braves after Fulton Evich got through five with a one nothing lead. And now the 2 2 again. Swing and a high towering fly ball belted deep right field. Freddie Freeman has hit a two run homer. What an at bat. Pointing at his dad up there as he circles home plate. There, there's the guy we know. Good at bat, fought off some tough pitches. Something inner third, didn't try to inside out. Look at the upper body. See how quick he got his foot down there? That kept his upper body back. There we go. Freddie Freeman's first homer since June 15th when he hit one off Clayton Richard of the Padres. A couple of terrific takes, a couple of foul balls in that sequence. And a 426 foot homer has given the Braves a three run lead. Only the second homer that Gant's given up. Big blow. So nobody out, and Marquecas takes a ball in the dirt. And after the home run now and the long inning, the St. Louis pen finally begins to work here. Braves are trying to sweep the Cardinals in St. Louis. Two balls and a strike. And that missed high and away. It's three and one. Braves are catching the Cardinals at a most opportune time. This was supposed to have been Michael Waka's day to pitch. He's hurt. 
Braves are catching the Cardinals at a downtime offensively. Atlanta's done their share of that. The Cardinals have scored six runs in their last three games. They have no runs and one hit today. And nobody out from Arcacus who hit a grand slam here yesterday. And a base on balls. So three straight Atlanta runners reach. And now Mike Maddox will very slowly make his way to the mound. That'll buy some more time for the Cardinals relief corps to get ready. So Atlanta continues a long sixth inning. They've got a two spot so far. They lead three nothing here in game three. You can go any way you want. Go style. Go savings. Go today. Let's go. Mike Maddox, who did such a terrific job with the Washington Nationals pitching staff, now in his first season as the pitching coach here with the Cardinals. That looks familiar, doesn't it? Maddox with a number 31. So runner at first for Tyler Flowers. Gant issues his third walk to Nick Marcakis. Acuna waits on deck. Freddie Freeman with a long home run breaks the game open 3 0. Nothing in one. Lead the Marlins 5 2. That game's in the ninth inning down in Miami. At last report, the Phillies and Nationals were tied three apiece. That game in the seventh at last report. Here it's 3 0 Braves on four hits. Ball two. Tampa Bay won today. They beat the Astros. Boy, what a job Tampa Bay has done. The Tampa Bay Rays are over 500 with that victory today. And in third place. Since they started using that opener, that relief pitcher to start the game, they have the lowest ERA in baseball. And today they knocked off the world champs. The pitch. Good hook, two balls, two strikes. Mets can win. They'll start July in good fashion. They just came off a 5 and 21 June. The worst month in Mets history. Two balls, two strikes. And a good take. I know Shane Carl was warming up. He's taking a seat now. Because it didn't, doesn't take many pitches to get loose. But with this long half inning, I wonder if they might send Mike back out there. He's kind of refreshed a little bit. Maybe. There is a little bit of a breeze that's blowing across from right to left. Full count pitch. Runner goes. And Flowers grounds to third. Carpenter will have one play. It's to first, so sending Marquez keeps the Braves out of a double play. And now Acuna will be the batter with a runner at second and one out. And that's going to end the day for John Gant, who, after 79 pitches on a brutally hot day, will surrender three runs for the moment and be taken down for a Cardinal reliever.
Mike Myers was the man up and throwing for Mike Matheny. And the Cardinal skipper takes the baseball and again departs after facing the Braves for the first time today. 3 0 Atlanta. Freddie Freeman's homer. The big blow so far this afternoon. Manage your tickets, enjoy check in offers, exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. 3 0 Braves, a two run homer by Freddie Freeman earlier here in the sixth inning, has chased John Gant. And now Mike Myers is on to pitch. Mike Myers is tough. 2 0, 281 ERA. Strikeout per inning, not many walks. We saw him here Friday night. He's the only guy that really pitched well, and it was only. He was only left in there for two thirds of an inning, but he got a strike out, a ground out, and looked good doing it. 91 to 99, depending on the two seamer or four seamer on his fastball, slider, and a good changeup. He'll be greeted by Ronald Acuna, who's popped out twice. And a blistering fastball off the plate, one ball, no strikes. Myers 26 out of Grove City Ohio a third round pick back in 2013. And a couple of cups of coffee with the big league Cardinals in 2016 and 2017 seven total games. A whopping 22 earned runs in 10 big league innings before this year. I don't believe that. It may be written, but what I'm seeing, no <laughs> way that happened. I guess you could say this Mike Myers in those stints was too grooving, baby. He's in Mike's world now. Yes, he is. Went to Ole Miss. Lives in Naples, Florida in the offseason. The 2 2 pitch is bounced toward the shortstop. Marquecas can't advance. High throw to first and late. Infield hit for Acuna, who's fired up about that. Speed never slumps, and Ronald outran the baseball. And good base running by Marquecas not to run into an out at third base. Well, this is what it what it's all about when you watch. Acuna cross first base. That hustle pays off. He legs out the throw, gets a base hit, and he is very happy about that. You know what I like about that play? A couple things. No self proclaimed safe call, <laughs> yeah. and no problem de accelerating mm -hmm. after he's spread it through the bag. That's good.
Something else to think about. We're told this is a 19 minute half inning. So think about how long the Cardinals have been standing out in this heat defensively. Worst worst situation of all is that pitching change. Line drive into center field, a base hit. Marquez is chugging around third, gets the green light. Fam's throw is going to be cut off. Ball drop, throw to third is late. Everybody's safe. Atlanta leads by four. Carpenter. Another RBI hit. Sorry, Chip Carpenter, I think, wants the Cardinals to take a look at this. He thought he got Acuna at third. Fam's throw is going to be late, and if, if Martinez hadn't dropped it, they'd have had an easy shot at Acuna, who read the play. But the tag was on the back of his hand. Well, the we Cardinals see. are going to challenge. Chris Siegel had the call. And Jerry Meals will join on the headsets as St. Louis challenges the safe call at third base. And the question is enough evidence to overturn. Does that exist? Chris certainly had a good look at it. The one thing we know we can close the book on Gant. John's given up four runs. The only question is, is Acuna? Safer out at third. The tag looked to be up on the elbow yeah, while the did. hand was on the bag. Uh huh. That might be the difference in them deciding not to overturn it if they thought it was borderline. The only problem is it seems the longer the call takes, the worse your chances of having the call go your way. So we shall soon see. Second RBI of the day for Charlie. And more waiting for the Cardinals defense. So the verdict is in. He's safe. So the Cardinals lose their challenge. Acuna in safely. First and third for the Braves as Myers is greeted rudely with back to back hits. Braves scored 11 yesterday. They scored five in game one. They've got four so far here. And Dansby Swanson, the hitter, runners first and third, one out. Ryan Flaherty on deck. Looks like this long inning and the Heat will take Fulton Evich out of the game after five full innings. Downstairs, ball one. Broken bat grounder to first. The throw comes to the plate, and he beat it. Acuna with a head first slide beats the wrap at the plate. Martinez made that throw to the plate, and as he threw it, he slipped and couldn't get a whole lot on the throw. And Atlanta, with blazing speed by Acuna, steals another run. And he's standing right at the base. He didn't even step on first base. Safe at first, too. He could easily have done the both in the same fell swoop, step on the bag, and throw. Probably would have had better footing. So that's not charged an error, but again, an example of the frustrating nature of the Cardinals and their lack of defense this year. So, the best of all possible worlds for the Braves. They get the run in, they get another runner aboard, they get Flaherty in the game, and now a ball in the dirt sends Culberson to third base on a wild pitch. How about let's just kind of track Acuna's trip around the bases there, huh? Yeah. Legging out an infield hit, going first to third, and actually rounding second, kind of stopping, watching the throw, took off the third, made that, scored on a ground ball to a drawn in infield. Gotta like that, don't you? So it's 5 0 Atlanta, and Flaherty the batter.
Ansby gets his 32nd RBI. And down and in to Ryan. Ball two. So Mike Fulton five innings of one hit shutout ball with nine strikeouts. First and third one out. The pitch. Swing and a fly ball towards center. Fam will retreat. That's going to be deep enough to bring home Culberson. A productive out for Flaherty. A sacrifice fly to score the fifth run of the inning. It's six nothing Braves. That'll make you feel better if you're Ryan Flaherty not getting as many at bats as you did certainly at the beginning of the year. But to come up and add an add another run there in a pinch hit roll. Much appreciated by his teammates. I think that's the second sacrifice fly by the Braves in this series. They went a month with one sacrifice fly. Which is hard to do. So a very long sixth inning for the Atlanta offense. They've played it five runs. They lead six nothing. They've held the Cardinals to one hit. Anders hit the ball in the air three times is 0 for 3. One ball, no strikes. Martinez wanted the Cardinals to look at that play at first, but they already blew their challenge yeah. on the Acuna play at third. Mm -hmm. Right like there, a strike. Cardinals have been in the field for almost a half an hour. 26 minutes. As the Braves have sent nine to the plate, the pitch. Another one to the backstop. That's a couple of wild pitches for Myers. Okay, tell me those numbers again on Myers last year. <laughs> one and one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the 17 version right here, I think. Not the 18. No. Nope. Defense didn't help him. Couple of hits. Sack fly, two wild pitches. He's given up two runs. And Ender ahead in the count, two balls at a strike. And over Ron Washington's head, Johan Camargo scampers out of the Braves' dugout, too, as that was <laughs> a heat seeking missile. Wash might want to do what Renee Latchman did for so many years here and move way down the line like they did for Mark McGuire here. You know it. Nice catch. Got his floppy hat on. Right now the crowd might be better fielders than their team. Oh. Two balls, two strikes. Let's see if this Andrews, one's caught cleanly. Andrews making friends with everybody. Oh. He knows it. Yeah. E section <laughs> 114. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. The pitch is bounced back to the mound. And the ball dropped. Ender jogs to first and is out for the final out of the inning. What an inning it was for the Braves. They score five times. Freddie Freeman with a 426 foot homer got the parade started. After a half an hour, half inning, Atlanta with a big lead.
the stretch presented by Synovus, the bank of here. Blistering hot day in St. Louis. Mike Fultonevich out after five innings of one hit shutout ball. He threw 86 pitches. And he'll be replaced by Shane Carl, who has a 6 nothing lead with which to play. He could use a good outing here after a rough one against Cincinnati on the 26th. That was the last time he was out there. He walked four guys in two innings, gave up a couple of runs, but the Braves have provided the bullpen with a nice six run lead to go to work on this hot day. Matt Carpenter has walked and struck out. This is outside ball one. Tell you what would be the best of all worlds is a quick one two three inning and run those Cardinals right back out there. Yeah their feathers are drooping right now. They were out in the field for about a half an hour. As the Braves sent nine men to the plate. Sharply hit but right at Ozzy. He's got it. And Carpenter is retired one man down. Tommy Pham, he's 0 for 2. Washington and the Phillies tied 3 3. That game's in the eighth inning. Cubs all over the Twins, 9 to 1. John Lester is pitching for the Cubs. Boy, he had a great June. He's trying to help the Cubs edge closer to Milwaukee in the divisional race in the Central. There's a strike. Average all the way down to 242. In that game at Philly, Gio Gonzalez, we talked about how he got off to a good start today. He had only thrown 49 pitches going into the fifth inning. He finished with 89. Wow. That's not like him. Although similar to his last start. Against Tampa. This one's lined just out of reach Albies. Great leaping effort. And for Pham, that is his first hit in his last 32 at bats. May want the ball. And Freddie Freeman with a tap on the leg. Hitters know what that's like. And that was sharply hit just out of reach. Well, how's he got up on that one? So here's Martinez. He has hit into a double play and has struck out. Over but low. Ball one. Mets one in Miami. They beat the Marlins 5 2. That is a final score. Steven Matz was the man assigned the starting job for New York. Dan Straley started for the Marlins today. Real disappointment for New York was the Marlins sent two rookie starters at them in the first two games of the series, and the two rookies beat them. Mm -hmm. Sandy Alcantara and Pablo Lopez, who won yesterday. In fact, guys making their big league debuts this year are 3 0 against the Mets. Is that right? One of them, Mike Soroka. Two balls, no strikes. In the air to center, right at Ender, who tracks that down two away. Mets do get some interesting news, too. David Wright was with the club. And David Wright was actually taking ground balls at third base for the Mets down in Miami. I saw some video of him swinging in the cage and um, looked like a Age old David Wright swing didn't look like there was any favoring it of anything in his back or neck, shoulder. What a remarkable story that would be. Well, he's one of my favorite players. Uh huh. It's one of those, as a Braves fan, one of those double edged swords. 
you really don't like the Mets too much, but it's hard to root against David Wright. Right. For how great a player in person he is. I'm with you. I hope he makes it back. So we get to miss by Ozuna. Strike one. It's safe to say the Mets could use any kind of good stories they can generate. As they have been neck and neck with Miami for the seller in the East. Runner goes, the pitch is fouled at the plate. And Ozuna 0 and 2. I one in St. Louis Braves all over the Cardinals again it's six to nothing. Braves trip continues to Yankee Stadium tomorrow then Milwaukee for four games. The Cardinals head west to Arizona the Giants and then the White Sox the pitch he is grounded slowly left side Charlie nice play fires to Ooh. second how slick was that. Charlie Culberson's having himself a day. Beautiful play at the hot corner on a hot day, and a couple of runs scoring hits as well. We go to seven. Inning, it's the stretch presented by Sunovas, the bank of here. Greg Holland is the next man up out of the Cardinal bullpen, signed to a six million dollar contract after playing for the Royals and the Rockies. Three time All Star who has had a very rough go of it after signing late here in St. Louis. He's got Albies, Freeman, and Marcakis, the trio that had a lot of fun last time up. Braves scored five runs in the sixth inning. The Cardinals were in the field a half an hour. He signed a six million dollar deal, did you say? Yes. And turned down how much from the Rockies? Fifty two million. Fifty two million. I wonder how his agent feels about that. I wonder how Greg feels about that. Thanks probably, to his agent. Probably not so good. No. Mid 90s fastball slider curve trying to find the success he had in the first half of last year with Colorado when he was outstanding. Yeah he led the National League in saves. And they. Said. Here it is you want 52 million. He didn't. Wade Davis did so Davis got the exact same deal from Colorado. Holland was the odd man out outside looking in. And the Cardinals swooped in to try to help fill a vacancy in their bullpen with injuries to Luke Gregerson and others. 
and it hasn't worked out. I just I love it when teams make a bona fide nice offer to a player who says no and they immediately go get somebody else. They don't fool around. They're not on the one knee begging. Please come back. Here's fifty two million dollars. You don't want it. Hey here's another guy that does. Yeah. You might be better. Fly ball center. Fam on the run. Still going. Look at that ball carry but he tracks it down on the warning track. A deep drive by Albies is caught for the first out. Ball jump. And here's Freddie. Boy, he had a big smile on his face in the dugout after he ended a two week long homerless drought. That sixth inning at bat was impressive, not just because of the size of the home run, but the pitches he took and the pitches he fouled off. It was very Freddie Freeman like. Takes a strike. Line out of play, zero and two. Six feet over the bullpen. First homer since the 15th of June against Clayton Richard of the Padres for Freddie. One of the six Atlanta hits. And Holland ready the 0 2. And he chased that one something off speed. Two up, two down. Only the first time Freddie struck out in this series. And Marquecas, the batter, 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Well, suffice it to say, it's going to be really important for the Braves' left handed hitters to do some good work at Yankee Stadium. Short porch and right. Think about Enciarte, Albies, Freeman, Marquecas, and the damage they might be able to do in that series up in New York. And the Braves will go toe to toe with Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge. And the second place Yankees starting tomorrow night with Anibal Sanchez getting the opening game assignment. Anibal's pitched well against the Yankees in his career. And he's certainly used to that that venue. Yankees have 30 wins at home. They are 30 and 12. No balls, one strike. Aaron Boone is the Yankees manager in his first year out of the national television booth. He's got a good ball club. Pretty nice when your general manager calls you in the offseason and says, hey, we got a chance to get Giancarlo Stanton and add him to the lineup. You want to do that? What do you think the answer was? <laughs> You've got some nice young players to mix in there, too, with Torres, Andahar. Sanchez not that old but he's been scuffling a little bit. He's even talking maybe sending him back to triple A. I think they brought Brandon Drury back up from the minor leagues. And the Yankees have an excellent bullpen too with Batances and company. Greg Bird at first. Not that old. Good mix. One two pitch. Popped up. And Carpenter at third base has this one sized up and he makes the play to retire the side. Holland has a one two three seventh inning. It's time to stretch in St. Louis.
Braves six, Cardinals nothing. Shane Carl back out there for Atlanta in relief of Mike Fultonevich. We will get to Yankee Stadium late tomorrow afternoon in time for game one. There'll be a celebratory mood in the broadcast booth while we're in town. Former Braves broadcaster John Sterling, the legendary voice of the Yankees on radio, will celebrate his 80th birthday on Independence Day. Man, and he is still going strong. Jed Jerko leads off for St. Louis. They have struck. He has struck out and walked. It's good that Carl can go another inning. Not much for the Redbird faithful to cheer about today. They've been held to two hits. Well, the other side of it too, Chip. They. They didn't get a run on Friday night till the ninth inning. They didn't get a run last night till the ninth inning. And they don't have a run today. And they won't be back to St. Louis until July 13th. When they take on the Cincinnati Reds a club they normally dominate but that they've had some trouble with Cincinnati as did the Braves. Reds pitching has gotten an awful lot better and they've got a lineup that can go toe to toe with anybody so <laughs> it's a real tough stretch for Mike Matheny and the Cardinals trying to stay within shouting distance of Milwaukee five and a half back at the start of action today. The Reds have a manager who's has that team playing good baseball and that manager is Jim Riggleman who for a long time was in the Cardinals system as a coach minor league coordinator a disciple of George Kissel. We got uh, our ballots today for player of the month, rookie of the month, pitcher of the month ballot, and I voted for Jesse Winker. He put together a tremendous month of June for the Reds. 1 2 pitch is downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. They're in the ninth inning in Philly, 3 3 Washington and the Fightins. Arizona Giants no score bottom first in Phoenix. That's where St. Louis heads next. 2 2 pitch. And now it's full. Carl Reddy with his 3 2. And Jerko bounced it foul. Probably ball four. That was a little help there. Jerko looked like he was on his way to being a superstar when he came up with the San Diego Padres. 23 homers, 63 RBIs in 2013. This one's popped up behind first. Long run. Can anybody catch up to it? It is a fair ball. And a bloop single for Jerko gets the St. Louis seventh started. No man's land. So things didn't work out in San Diego for Jerko who in 2014 after he signed a big contract got sent down to Triple A. Yeah they talked about him out there as, as like he thought he didn't thought he had it made. He was be in the big leagues for 20 years it didn't work as hard. Wasn't the same guy after he signed that big deal. They tried to get his attention when they sent him back to Triple A and apparently they didn't weren't satisfied with the results when he came back and traded him. Yeah 2015 16 homers 57 RBIs. Then they traded him with the Cardinals for John Jay. A 30 homer year in St. Louis and 16 20 homers in 2017. But the funny thing about Jerko you look at his home run totals Joe not a lot of RBIs. 30 homers 59 RBIs 20 homers 67 RBIs. 
his hmm. first two full years with the Cardinals. That is odd. RBI chance for him. Well, as Bader swings and misses, two balls and a strike. RBI chances for Jericho have been few and far between in this series. The Braves have held him down for the most part. He's at first, however, with a blue pit. And Harrison Bader, who has struck out twice, is digging in. Uh, Jericho snapped a no for 14 with that blue pit. Good movement on that pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Jesse Biddle is getting ready in the Braves bullpen. Sam Tui Valala is up for the Cardinals. The pitch is off the plate, full count. First way to get the Cardinals back in the game is to walk, folks. They are, however, down 6 nothing. Runner at first, nobody out. And a swing and a miss. Bader's got the hat trick. One on, one out. Ten Cardinals have been struck out in the game. They're averaging about nine strikeouts per game as a club. Yeah, he collapses on that back leg. It's a big leg kick. And then everything goes back and down, which can only create an uppercut swing and a steep uppercut swing. His head must drop good six, eight inches mm -hmm. with that swing. So one on, one out for Colton Wong. And a bouncing ball. That stayed fair. Just past the bag. That'll ricochet off the signage. Jerko on his way to third. He'll be stopped. It's a double for Colton Wong. That snaps an 0 for 11. And the Cardinals have runners at second and third with one out. Nice turn on that pitch. Wong's been standing at second base for a good 20 25 seconds and he is still gasping for air. That's how oppressive it is for the players. But his sixth two base hit and now Pena the batter. Pitcher's spot due next. Greg Garcia's grabbed a bat and waits on deck. Lined over first. That's going to get down for a hit that's going to score a couple of runs. So all of a sudden, St. Louis creeping back into the game. Two across here in the seventh inning. Third hit of the frame against Shane Carl. The fourth hit he's allowed, and that's going to end his afternoon. So Shane goes an inning and a third, four hits, two runs so far. He has struck out one, didn't walk anyone. And Jesse Biddle was warming. He is the man coming on next. Another rough outing for Shane Carl. Let's see if Biddle can put out a seventh inning fire in what's now a 6-2 Atlanta game.
St. Louis on the board for the first time. A couple of runs here in the seventh inning. And Jesse Biddle is going to be the next Atlanta pitcher. Jesse's been pitching great. He worked here a couple of nights ago, two thirds of an inning, zeros across. In his last five outings, he's only allowed one hit. He's given up three walks, but he's also struck an out, struck out four, and done a real good job. Needs to get out of this jam and limit the damage to just two. And it's not going to be Garcia, but it's going to be Munoz who's going to come on and hit. Iro Munoz, a right-handed batter for the Cardinals. Pena with a two run scoring single the man at first and a bouncing ball hit towards short Dansby slides fires to second one and on the transfer the ball is dropped but Ozzie clearly got the force play at second and the Cardinals cannot challenge anyway so the out call will stand two away more good infield defense so with a terrific play earlier this afternoon and now Dansby to a sliding stop and a good feed. Ball came out of the throwing hand. He clearly went to get it. It's amazing to me, Joe, watching how quickly Dansby races to that spot, goes into his pop-up slide, and then able to get up and get something on the throw. Mm -hmm. And I like it because he doesn't, he's very accurate from where he's throwing it from. He's not taking a long time to get up on top and be a pitcher. He's getting rid of it quickly. He's played great defense. So a nice play there to get the second out of the inning. That brings up Carpenter, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Seventh inning, 6-2 Atlanta the lead. Let's end this Cardinal rally right here. Peter Moylan has gotten up in the Braves pen. Tui Valalo will be the next Cardinal pitcher. No secret the struggles of the Braves bullpen in the month of June. Seven out of 13 in saves, a lot of walks, and a 530 collective relief ERA. There's a strike. They've allowed a couple of runs today. The Braves bullpen expected to be bolstered tomorrow with the return of Arodis Vizcaino from the disabled list. So Carpenter digs in. He's got home run power, 15 of them, the pitch. And he was going for it right there, full count. So what does Jesse have in mind with Matt Carpenter? A strike. Well, that would be good. Simple strike. He lost him. Ball four. So here's Pham, one for three. His sixth inning single was his first hit in 32 at bats. And Pham will not be allowed to face Biddle here with two on and two out and two runs in. Brian Snitker all the way to the center of the diamond. He'll take the ball away from Biddle and bring on Peter Moylan, the third Atlanta pitcher of the inning.
Terry, we hope to salute Peter Moylan if he can get third and final out of this Cardinal seventh inning. The Redbirds have scored twice. And Peter will face Tommy Pham with a couple of Redbird runners aboard here. Yeah, it's getting a little too close for comfort. Peter's last three outings, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and two nights ago against St. Louis, a total of an inning and two-thirds, no hits or runs, one walk, two strikeouts. He'd settle for any kind of out right here. Pham has faced Moylan three times at the plate. He's walked twice and he's made an out. The 1 0 pitch floats in for a strike. Might have swung at ball too. That helps. Yeah, that was a good sinker. Running in on him. Carpenter at first. Munoz at second. And Moylan readies with his one two pitch. You've got Martinez waiting on deck. And he has huge power. That was a good setup pitch a fastball away now throw the same pitch in the same general location with a slider and see if he chases it. Fly ball well hit center Ender on the run as far as he can go it is a home run. A three run homer by Tommy Pham and all of a sudden the Cardinals are back to within a run. Wanting the Braves to check that. Threw him a slider, but looked like a hanger. Yep, right in the middle of the plate. Man. That, whatever it hit, it hit something hard, and it looks like it hit something on the back side of the fence. And it looks like they have some vegetation growing right up above the fence and it looked like it clearly went over the wall. The Braves are going to take a look at this. But. The Cardinals with a five run inning of their own and now it's a six five Braves lead. Yeah, it hit something back there. Ender's insistent on it but. From our angle we're up higher we could see it hit obviously hit something back there. Part of the flower bed. So Martinez stands in representing the tying run. Great starters in this series have been outstanding. No runs allowed in 17 plus innings. The bullpen. Wow. Seven innings, 12 hits, and 10 runs now. Well, you said this back in Atlanta during the two and four homestand. The Braves are scoring enough runs. It's stopping the other guys. Once you've gotten the lead, that's been the issue. Two strikes for Martinez. And a slow roller. Peter can't get it. Tried to barehand it, and everybody's safe. And now the Cardinals have the tying run aboard the winning run coming to the plate potentially in Marcel Ozuna. I don't know if Charlie was going to have a better chance at this. I, it looked to me like Martinez got a slow start out of the box. But Charlie was going to be there. There's nobody up in the Atlanta pen. Tyler Flowers out for a visit here. He's going to give Moylan a breather after he broke for that bouncing ball. Yeah, 
After Munoz bounced into the force play, a walk, a homer, now an infield hit, and five St. Louis runs are in. Ozuna one for three in the game, a fourth inning single. Zuna, the ninth man to hit in the inning. And 0 2. In the Atlanta eight, Flowers, Acuna, and Culberson are the hitters. Braves led this one 6 0. It's now 6 5, and it's the Braves defensively who've had to be out on the field a long time. Staying with the fastball after hanging that slider to fan this guy tends to chase sliders off the plate but he might be reluctant to go to it. And all this started on that bloop single by Jerko. Down the right field line. Bader struck out. Wong doubled. Pena with a two run hit. Shane Carl was taken down. Jesse Biddle got a force out. Then he shoot a walk. Moylan came in. Pham hit a three run homer. And now Martinez at first. A one two count to Ozuna. To short. Tricky hop, but that is the inning. The Braves bend but don't break. They did, however, get the Cardinals right back in the game. St. Louis scores five, one run game, two innings left in St. Louis. Visit your nearest Advance Auto Parts store to get the quality parts you want from people that know a lot about them. Bad news is Atlanta's bullpen gave up five runs in the seventh inning. The good news is Atlanta's offense still has them in front. It's six to five, and the Braves will try to pad that lead against Jordan Hicks, who becomes the third Cardinal reliever to work today. You know, he's the flamethrower that we talked about Friday night. He had a little trouble getting the ball over. In fact, he gave up Three runs on a hit and a walk. 98 to 102 miles an hour. Slider change. And Tyler Flowers will be the first Braves hitter to greet him. Flowers, Acuna, and Culberson 
as that man, Tommy Pham, hit a three run homer to bring the Cardinals back to within a run. Flowers not sure that was a strike. Cardinals had a great note on this guy. He's thrown over 100 more pitches at 100 miles an hour or faster than Araldus Chapman of the Yankees. And he's two for two in that category, but one and one in the count to Tyler. Well, he's too quick to check that, that uh, radar gun up there on the scoreboard in left field. He wants to see. to short and flowers will be retired to start the eighth inning one away. Beginning in the sixth for Acuna legging out an infield hit. Went first to third on a base hit. Scored on a ground ball to first. Didn't get him when they were trying to cut him down at the plate. That was a big run. The Braves added another one after that. Charlie Culberson scored, and Charlie's runs a difference in the ball game right now. Acuna takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Hickok said Acuna went around. 0 oh and 2. Good at bat against him Friday night. Fouled off some pitches, ultimately struck out. But gave him a good battle. Cardinals know that Milwaukee was beaten today. They'd like to come back and steal this one. They're down a run. And fouled away. Matt Harvey, by the way, was the winning pitcher for the Reds. Milwaukee had two runs and four hits today. He's on a good roll right now. Wonder if the Reds will keep him or maybe move him at the deadline in 30 days. He's certainly pitching a lot better than he did with the Mets. No balls, two strikes. One out for Acuna. Here it is. 103 miles an hour, but too high. And Hicks thought that one was a strike. Check swing on a slider. There's another one. Got away with that one. Tell you what, that's pretty amazing work at the plate. You spit at 103. That probably looks the size of a beach ball. And then you foul off an 88 mile an hour slider. Man. That 103 doesn't look like a beach ball. No. Chip, I'm telling you, no. <laughs> More like a BB. <laughs> Good point. One ball, two strikes. And he got him looking for something else. Acuna struck out two away. Quick pitched him in a way. He used a slide step, not that high leg kick. Threw off his timing enough. Got him looking. Ooh. 
So two outs for Culberson. Charlie's two for two with a walk. He scored a run. He's knocked in two. In the St. Louis eighth, it'll be the group that got their seventh inning rally started. Jerko, Bader, and Colton Wong. One down there is mighty tough. Dan Winkler getting ready for the home eighth. As 21 year old Jordan Hicks. Tries to have a rebound game against the Braves today. The pitch is chopped slowly toward third. Carpenter fields, fires on the run, and the stretch in time. Nice play by Carpenter. And Hicks gets the Braves 1-2-3 in the eighth. Winkler versus Jerko and company. 6-5 Atlanta, bottom of the eighth inning. Now a one run lead bottom of the eighth inning the Braves need six outs to preserve a sweep in St. Louis it's Dan Winkler's turn to work Dan's in his 36th game of the year he worked last night excuse me two nights ago against St. Louis Friday night he got a save his first big league save first professional save two thirds of an inning and included a strikeout. He's thrown shutout baseball his last three outings covering three innings two hits no runs or walks. They need him to be. That good today and they need him to get the first battery faces which is Jerko. Mm -hmm. First batter faced has been a big issue during this. June. Swoon by the Braves relief Corps. That's up and away for Jerko. One ball, no strikes. Popped him up. Dansby drifts out. Ender comes in. Acuna is there. It's going to be Ronald who makes the play, and there's the first out. Here's Bader. Bader's got the hat trick, three strikeouts. That barely missed, one ball, no strikes. Bud Norris is getting ready for the Cardinals. He has become their closer and he's done an excellent job in relief. Bud, the former Brave, 
Winkler spins out of his delivery. He's been doing that a lot. Three and zero oh. to a man that's zero oh for three in the game and has walked only fourteen times this year. Do it again, same place. Got the corner that time. Perfect pitcher's pitch. Great presentation by Flowers, too. Yeah, good help by Tyler. Got the call. So, big pitch in the game right here. Full count. And driven to right, but playable. Markakis is going to catch that two down. We told you about Mike Fultonevich being from Minooka, Illinois, a couple hundred miles away from St. Louis. Dan Winkler's from this part of the world, too. He's from Effingham, Illinois, across the river, about 95 miles away. So I'll bet Dan's got a pretty hefty pass list for this series in St. Louis. He's gotten the first two Cardinal hitters, but beware Colton Wong. He's got a walk, a double, and a run scored. And he's hit six homers this year. Ball two. St. Louis has scored the last five runs in the game. Winkler trying to shut him down in the eighth and hope for some Atlanta insurance in the ninth. There's a strike two and one. That'll scatter the Cardinals. That ball found the stairwell and whistled right through. That almost got Adam Wainwright. Adam saying, I'm glad I hit you, not me. Base is empty, 2 2 pitch for Colton Wong. Here it is. High fly ball, right center field. Markake is sprinting. Ender on Ciarte on the run. He got it. He caught it. Ender and Markake is almost collide on the warning track, and Wong flies out to end the inning. He's a gold glover, you know. Neither one was going to give up on it, and Ender hangs on. What a great job. Wow.
to the right center field gap. And a great catch ends the Cardinal eighth inning. I thought it was a home run when he hit. But this is a tale of two veterans who in this situation are not going to let that ball drop. It stays in the ballpark. One of them's going to catch it. And you know that the center fielder has is the captain. If he's calling for it, it's his. But he wasn't probably 100% sure he was going to get there. He actually caught it on a backhand trying to avoid the collision. Great, great play. Whew. So here we go tonight where a little insurance wouldn't hurt. Dansby Swanson leads off. Danny Santana will follow, then Ender Inciarte. Hicks is back out there after 14 pitches last inning and delivers a strike. Almost hit him. It's an even count. Phillies and Nationals are in the 11th, tied three apiece. Braves lead the Phillies by three games. One ball, one strike. And fouled away. It's one and two. Be AJ Minter for the ninth for Atlanta. You'll have the eight, nine, and one hitters coming up for the Cardinals. And a ground ball to third. Carpenter's got it. Long throw across to first. Close play and just in time. Good Man. hustle. He cannot get much on that throw across the diamond mm -hmm. anymore, can he? No, he can't. Comes up with it quickly. That is, that's got a lot of arc in it. Barely got him. So it's Santana in the ninth. Danny had a seventh inning hit in game one. See if he can get aboard in front of Ender, Ozzie, and Freddie, who we hope will follow in this ninth inning. 6 5 Braves, game three. The pitch is chopped to first. Martinez has it. He flips to the pitcher, and Hicks has his second out. Cardinals pitcher spot is due up in the ninth inning second. They have Molina, Fowler, and Garcia able to pinch hit. Here's that quick pitch again. He's throwing strikes today. He didn't throw strikes Friday night. Good point. Little chopper. Carpenter to his left. Throws on the run. Low. Pretty play at first by Martinez. And Hicks, a very impressive two scoreless inning line today. Last chance for St. Louis. There's who's coming up. Minter's coming in, we presume.
Presented by Xfinity. It's A.J. Minter, the man of the hour for Atlanta. He needs to secure three outs with the narrowest of leads to pick up the save and allow the Braves to sweep the Cardinals in this three-game series in St. Louis. He's pitched well lately. His last 13 games, he's pitched to a 146 ERA. That's two earned runs over his last 12 and a third. And opponents during that stretch are just five for 39. They're not getting hits off of him. Hopefully today he's not going to put any runners on base. He has no room for error. He's got Pena to start. Then Yadier Molina has grabbed a bat. He's on deck. He is going to hit next. Pena with a two run scoring single back in the seventh. As Minter goes to work in the ninth. And that's an excellent way to start. Braves are 39 and 2 this year when leading after eight innings. The Cardinals are 3 and 33 when trailing after eight. Each of these teams has a, has seven walk-off wins. No balls at a strike. And he's quickly ahead 0 and 2. AJ ready with his 0-2 pitch. Straw came out. Blistering fastball at 98. That was some cheese. Threw in the cutter in there a couple of times. That's a whole lot different than that four seamer. Listen to the hand from Molina. Last night he played his 1800th career game as a Cardinal the fifth Redbird in their team's history to do that. He could tie the game. And Minter back to work. Strike outside corner. That first guy is a big out. Took a little off and got that corner call. Five pitches, five strikes. That was nice. He's got. A whole lot of choices to make here. The 0 2 pitch. One and two. Fly ball pretty well hit, but not deep enough. Marquecas settles under that, and Molina's the second out. So one more man to get, but it's a tough out. It's Matt Carpenter. Carpenter hitting only a buck 67 against left handed pitching coming in. Nine for 54, but four of his 15 homers. I've been hit off lefties and he hit eight homers in June. And lefties hitting just 200 against AJ. So we'll see what happens here. Braves need one more out to complete the sweep. Two outs, nobody aboard. And way outside, one ball, no strikes. Carpenter's walked twice in the game. He scored once. That was ahead of Pham's long homer.
swing and a miss. He has good stuff working today. Not even to the Cardinal third baseman Matt Carpenter the pitch a little high ball two I'm glad it was high because he missed location I'm glad it wasn't about belt high Carpenter's not afraid to take a walk he's walked 47 times. He's ahead in the count. Minter brings it. Now it's two and two. Carpenter asks if that was a strike. And it wasn't. Tyler was set up way out off the plate, reached back for the target, and got it delivered right there. 11 pitches, eight strikes for AJ. Outstanding. I wouldn't mind him going out there again. One more to get. What's left of a big crowd on its feet? Two balls, two strikes. Here she comes. Tried to go out there, but missed. Three and two. Get after him. Make him swing. Absolute worst he can do is tie it up, and he may well do it, but don't walk him. So the 3 2 pitch in the bottom of the ninth. Here it is. Swinging bunt. It's going to spin foul. That had to be right off the end of the bat. Back that spot, Chip. Why not? Here we go. Out away. It's going hard today. Stay with that. Temptation would be to use that cutter here at that same general area so that it breaks a little off of the end of the bat. But there's also the risk he'll take it and walk. The 98, he's pounding the zone with that. Let's see what Tyler wants. Fastball up and away, I think. The pitch. High fly ball, right center field, but the park's going to hold it. Barcakis is there, and the Braves have swept the Cardinals. And how about Winkler? And Minter retiring the last six in a row. Great job by those two. The bullpen bent. It didn't break at the end. The Braves hang on and win six to five. They sweep the St. Louis Cardinals in a three hour, 11 minute nail biter. And it's off to New York for a date with the Yankees tomorrow night as the Braves, for the moment, three and a half games up in the Eastern Division thanks to a 6 5 thriller in St. Louis. What a game! And what a way to start this very difficult road trip.